back at 2.625. So he did come down 75,000. Every one of y'all loves selling Sunset. Everyone loves you? million dollar My listing. Business. The question is, how much money do agents truly make? And what's the real commissions that are coming in? Before I explain to you guys exactly how it works in real estate brokerages and commission split structures, don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Take a moment, click that subscribe button, click that bell so you can be notified, and let's get into this video. Now what's famous on a lot of these shows, you're seeing a lot of people going out, shaking each other's hands, deal closes, $10 million sales price, $600,000 commission. Boom, let's party. But the honest truth is, I never saw a deal close that way. I've been in the game for 15 years now. I have over 150 agents and none of my agents ever closed the deal over a handshake. Usually for a real estate agent, when you wanna work inside the industry, it comes with a lot of struggles and it comes with a lot of issues. No deal is smooth, but some deals are smoother than others because no two deals are created equally if you catch my drift. So before we get into commissions, let me give you guys a little bit of an idea of how deals actually work a lot of times what you're watching is people representing houses or representing buyers on the main portion of all these TV shows people are representing the sellers meaning they are selling agents and they have exclusive agreements on the properties now is every property on every TV show an exclusive and do they all sell the honest truth is no, a lot of these properties don't sell. A lot of these properties are pretty much property porn if you take it for an idea. And in the end of the day, they sit on the market and they're also not priced as well. But the truth is this, if you're a seller's agent, then you're making a certain type of commission. And if you're a buyer's agent, there is a certain type of commission. The way it usually works is like this. If said seller gives David, me, what's up guys? Give me all your listings. A listing and an exclusive, you know what ends up happening? I negotiate with the seller a certain type of commission. Let's say me and the seller close up a 6% commission. That 6% commission isn't only mine. That 6% commission is split between me and whoever brings a buyer. And a lot of sellers are super savvy. What happens if I end up bringing a buyer? A lot of sellers will want a discount on the commission. You already represent me. And if you bring a buyer, I want to pay you 1% less. So I will let you walk out of this deal with 5% commission. Great. That's awesome. Let's freaking do it. So we signed the exclusive agreement. What's my next option? I go ahead and I throw it up on the market, but I just don't throw it up on the market. There's a lot of expensive that real estate agents actually incur. First off, a lot of these listings don't just look bare bones. A lot of these houses are staged and guess what? Staged cost money. Pictures cost money. Putting it up on the market and doing these lavish parties also costs a lot of money and that's expenses that the brokerage and also the agents incur on top of themselves top agents sometimes get a marketing budget which means the brokerage actually gives them a little bit of their money as a kickback to the agents when they do very well which usually means that marketing budget comes from their commission meaning if an agent let's say is on a 70 30 split with a brokerage and it's a type of agent that brokerage might offer that agent a one or two percent marketing budget based upon their gci their gross commission income meaning hey you made a million dollars this year i'm going to give you a ten thousand or twenty thousand dollar marketing budget but marketing can over exceed that for example you want to go ahead and stage the house now staging this, these massive 5 10 20 000 square foot homes can cost 20 30 50 100 thousand dollars and the way these staging companies work is in many different ways they charge you based upon how long the furniture will be in the place, if it ever needs to be moved, if you want to paint some walls, and also the type of furniture that you get and the size of the house, apartment, condo, and so forth. Guys, before we continue with the video, take a moment. If you can subscribe to the channel, hit the bell button, but also, hey, add me on Instagram and join the Closer Gang group. That's my Instagram. Go join the Closer Gang and let's get back into it. Now let's go in a little bit deeper. These lavish parties, who pays for it? Listen, I'm gonna teach you guys a few tricks that you don't even know. If you work with a preferred lender, which is a mortgage broker, which you put on the listing, which means any buyer that comes to purchase from you, you tell them, hey, you can use your broker, but we have a preferred lender. And our preferred lender already pre-approved this property. The seller wants you to get pre-approved by this lender as well. And if you get pre-approved by this lender, then you can have a choice between which lender you wanna use. And that's what a preferred lender is. Now, 
a lot of times these mortgage companies, what they end up doing, they give you some type of a allocation budget. For example, they pay for dinners, they pay for breakfast, they can pay a little bit and contribute to parties and so forth. But baby, it's not that much. You're still gonna have to pocket some money. And these lavish parties from what I had from experience are anywhere from $3,000 all the way up to $20,000. On some buildings, I go all out and the cost definitely incurs. You have belly dancers, you have Circus du Soleil, you have food, you have wine, you have liquor, you have champagne, you have so much moving parts and that costs money. And on top of that, when you're hiring a professional photographer to take amazing pictures, that's gonna cost you too. Cause photography ain't cheap, especially the top, top, top people. Cause they also do Photoshop to the pictures and make sure that the pictures look 100% perfect. Okay, are you guys ready to talk about commission? So let's talk about commission. Commission, we already established that in the end of the day, commission is broken down in many different ways. You have the seller's agent and you have the buyer's agent. We already discussed that. Said seller is paying us 6%. We're splitting three and three with a buyer's agent. If we bring the buyer, we get a 5% payout. Great. Now, let's break it down even further than that. The most basic breakdown, you forget, agents work for an office offices have their split with agents so now let's say you sell a 10 million dollar home you get a what three hundred thousand to five hundred thousand dollar commission you might be on a 70 30 60 40 80 20 split with your said brokerage now that means that you're already cutting an average of 30 or 40 percent off your commission that goes back to your brokerage on top of that you have all your marketing expenses that we just discussed cut all the marketing expenses off of that and then guys let's get deeper into this a lot of those listings on these shows are co-exclusives co-brokes or worked with multiple agents or worked on as a team and now what does that mean if a team gets a listing every individual in the team gets a breakdown of that commission or for example if it's a co broke or a co-exclusive with another agent that you went out and pitched to get this building because a lot of times these big buildings or these big houses you have to go in with a powerful force and if you're doing that guess what your commission is split 50 50 with them that's usually the average on time so there's a lot more breakdowns and whenever your brokerage let's say i get a listing and i don't have time to work on it so i hire lewis lewis you want to work on my listing he said yes. I'm gonna give you 25% to work on this listing. Does that make sense? I'm gonna have a lot of guidelines for you that you're gonna have to follow, you're gonna have to do, but you're gonna make 25% of the commission after expenses. Deal? So, Lewis is hired, and now I'm gonna give Lewis 25%. Lewis is gonna help me work open houses. Lewis is gonna help me work out all the photography. He's gonna be running back and forth, and he will be talking to clients and answering emails as well. Lewis is gonna take 25% of my commission. Now, my brokerage is gonna take 30% of my commission. On top of that, I'm gonna pay for all the marketing expenses. And then, if me and Lewis end up dealing with a buyer's agent, then the buyer agent is gonna take 3% of it. So, meaning my 300K, turned down into nothing. In the end of the day, there's a lot of costs that actually incur. So, is there good money in real estate? Of course there's good money in real estate. If I walk away with on a listing like that with $150,000 to $160,000 or $130,000, that's still more than people make in a year. And also as agents, we don't just work on one listing, we work on multiples. It's not about closing one deal, it's how many deals can we close annually. That's always our goal. It's still amazing money, but it's never as cut and dry as just like, oh, this is the commission and there's no other splits. And by the way, guys, you're forgetting the biggest thing of it all. In the end of the year, there's one thing that you always have to pay attention to. To. what's that taxes we always have to pay attention to taxes that's unavoidable in any company in any event anytime you work for someone you're always going to have some type of taxes to pay and one tip that i'll give you as a real estate agent or any of you guys looking to pursue a real estate agent career is never count the money monthly always count it annually because monthly you might have some months you make zero dollars and you might have some months where you make a hundred two hundred or three hundred thousand dollars by closing massive deals with that in mind 
Don't spend all your money. Always budget for taxes. Remember the third and third and third rule. That's my favorite rule. It's very simple and it's dumbed down. You take a third of your money, you put it away for taxes. You take a third of your money, you live off that money. And then you take the other third of your money and you invest that money or you save that money because that's going to create you passive income. Deals aren't easy to make, but deals are done all the time. Every day we're closing deals and every day we're getting things done. So understand this very simple. You can close a lot of deals and you can do great. It will take a lot of time and it's going to be a lot harder than a handshake. It's not about how you dress, even though you do want to dress to impress, but it's more about how you work, the knowledge you bring and the consistency and dedication you put in. There's a lot of work that goes into actually making this type of money. It's not just people that open the door, show an apartment and then be like, write me a check, daddy. A lot of work comes with being in real estate, but you can end up making a lot, a lot, a lot of money. Guys, I love you so much. Thank you for tuning in to another video. If this was helpful, leave a comment down below. If you want to see anything else, let me know. But please, don't forget to subscribe to this video. Click that bell button so you're notified anytime we drop something. And I love you guys. I'll see you on the next one. Perfect. Uh 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 u